Hello and a warm welcome to Fun of Flying. On the 21st of November last year I produced this particular video showing you how to get radio frequency data ref values out of X-Plane that could then be presented on a 16 by 2 LCD display. And having done that successfully it got me thinking about what else I could do with data refs and came up with the idea of designing a prototype transponder setup using an eight digit seven segment LED display along with seven push buttons with which to enter the required squawk code. However when I started looking into this I suddenly realized that this project wasn't going to be quite as easy as I thought. There wasn't going to be any issues with the physical wiring of the external components that was simple enough to do the problems encountered really came from X-Plane itself and how it actually stored the uh, transponder code data ref. Now many data refs in X-Plane store values as either 1 for on or 0 for off but there are many others that store values longer than a single digit and the stored data ref value for the transponder squawk code is obviously one of them and logic would dictate that the value stored for a transponder would be four digits long which seems perfectly sensible as this is what's shown in the virtual copy of most aircraft but unfortunately this is not always the case especially when the squawk code starts with a zero or two zeros or even three zeros here you can see an input of one two three four and the value stored by x-plane is actually that one two three four however when the squawk code input starts with one or more leading zeros x-plane does something strange and completely ignores the zeros and just stores the numbers that follow for example the input of zero two three four ends up as just two three four the input value of zero zero three four ends up as just thirty four and lastly the input value of 0, 0, 0, 0004 ends up as just 4. And I can actually show you this inside X-Plane itself by using a really valuable third party plugin called the DataRef tool during which time you'll be able to observe not only the transponder DataRef but more importantly the value that it's stored. Right, so here we are in X-Plane 12 and I've just loaded a Cessna Skyhawk for simplicity and you can see that the uh, squawk code on the transponder is already set to 1234. Um, if we go and find the data ref tool up here and do a search and we need to, to get close to where we need to be because there's literally hundreds if not thousands of data refs in here I'm just going to type in transponder and we want to notice if anything changes so we click on that and I want data ref so let's see what happens when I press one of these there we are so that is your transponder code and you can see it says there it's not very clear because it's quite small but you can see four two three four and that's what it shows on here and there's also another data ref code it's worded slightly differently but it says the same thing and if i change these let's just change it to seven 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 and that's exactly what you see that's the value that's being stored by explain against that data ref if i change it to five 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 and you get exactly the same thing again however if I wanted to make this squawk code say 0 4 4 4 what can you see it's left the 0 alone it's completely ignored it and it's just put 4 4 4 if I wanted to have another code say double 0 6 6 the leading zeros again are being completely ignored and all you get is the six six try another one Let's do one with three zeros this time and all you get is the three there all of the leading zeros have been ignored and the fact that this value can change uh, in the number of digits shown is a major problem 
in terms of uh, writing a sketch code to get this value um, out on the uh, LED display because obviously if I want to get that code out 0003 and I'm looking to that data ref to get it then all I'm going to really receive is 3 which doesn't do me any good at all so I've had to come up with a bit of code to get around that problem and I'll show you that when we look at the code in more detail now a bit remiss of me but I should have pointed out when we were going through this that if you enter a transponder squawk code of 0000, then X-Plane simply stores this as one single zero, which means that it's only the first three leading zeros of a squawk code that are being ignored and not all of them. Okay, so whether you would actually use a squawk code in real life that starts with one or more leading zeros is subject to some debate, but the fact that it can happen is enough to cock this whole project up. So as I indicated just now, it's somewhat fortunate that I managed to get around the problem with some clever programming. Okay, so next thing to do is have a look at um, the theoretical wiring diagram for our little project today. And as you can see, we're using two microcontrollers. We've got the Mega 2560 over here and the Leonardo over here. And the Mega 2560 is looking after all of the outgoing data refs from X-Plane and it's processing that data and then sending it on to our eight digit LED display here. So that's one circuit and we'll go back to that in a minute. Then the other circuit um, is the Leonardo and obviously we're using this um, for the inputs from the push buttons um, at which the Leonardo or the signals of which Leonardo processes and sends that those that data into X-Plane and then starts to operate the uh, transponder in the virtual cockpit uh, and we're using a Leonardo of course because that has a uh, native USB support now I did something like this previously in one of my videos um, where I set up uh, an external annunciator warning a light array with little LEDs if you remember if you saw that one but uh, I did initially uh, try to do all of this through just uh, the Leonardo microcontroller but it appears to me from the results I got that the Leonardo uh, has a conflict or the code is conflicted shall we say between being a hid device which is the way that we've set this up and the X-Plane Direct plugin uh, that we're using at the same time so ultimately I ended up having to split uh, the two operations out as you can see here anyway uh, getting back to the wiring uh, we'll look at this circuit first with the LED display firstly we need to energize this with 5 volt supply so we get we pick up a 5 volts from the board and that goes to terminal VCC uh, on the LED module then we also have a ground return um, from the terminal here which is GND spookily enough and that goes back around here to another terminal called GND then we have the serial communication wires coming from the LED module uh, coming down to pin terminals uh, 2, 3 and 4. Uh, the yellow one here uh, connects to a terminal called DIN, D-I-N. And then we have the blue one which connects to terminal CS or another name for it is LOAD. And then the last one, uh, the green one here, connects to a terminal called CLOCK or CLK. So that's all there is really for that. It's quite straightforward. If we come over this side, uh, another circuit which is equally straightforward. Uh, we have a Leonardo, of course. Then we have um, eight push buttons here, uh, and they're numbered zero through seven as they are on a transponder in the virtual cockpit. We have the signal wires coming from each of the push buttons to terminal zero through seven on the Leonardo and then we have a ground return coming from each of the push buttons back through uh, my little uh, ground distribution board that I use uh, to the Leonardo to complete the circuit. Now you'll notice that we're not using any um, pull down resistors uh, in this circuit um, physically 
uh, and that's because I've elected to use the integrated pull-up resistor that's uh, already inbuilt into the Le Le Leonardo microcontroller. Okay, um, so I think uh, that is about it for the wiring. Okay, so I was debating whether to include this bit in my video or not. But then I thought, well, you know, if I was going to talk to you about using LED displays at all, then I might just as well tell you everything that I've learned from using them, just in case you wanted to do something similar. The LED display module that I've chosen to use in this project is referred to as a MAX 7219. But this has built into it, I believe, two TM1637 four-digit seven-segment displays, which have been linked together and mounted on a convenient circuit board. Now, I know when I first started looking into purchasing this type of LED display, there was some confusion about these different codes, i.e. do I need a MAX7219 or a TM1637? Well, I answered my own question eventually through a bit of research. So all I can suggest is that if you're planning on purchasing one of these, then be a bit careful because the MAX 7219 can also be obtained with a larger dot matrix screen. And as far as the TM1637s are concerned, these can actually be purchased separately. Anyway, the purpose of getting a bit technical about this now is because there are a number of factors that you need to understand before you can start writing a sketch code for the MAX 7219. Firstly, LED displays in general are a bit restricted in terms of the characters they can present, unlike an LCD display which can present just about any character you throw at it. On the good side though, numerical characters are no problem at all for an LED display, with the MAX 7219 being able to present the digit 0 through 9 in each individual cell and 0 through 99,999,999 across all 8 cells. However, alpha characters on the other hand are a bit more tricky, with an LED display only able to present certain letters and a few special characters, which you can see on the screen. I may have missed some, but these are the ones that I could think of at the time of going to press. The main reason for this restriction lies in the way that each display cell is illuminated. You may have heard the term seven segment when it comes to LED displays, and this isn't the number of digit cells that the display has, it's actually the number of segments that can be illuminated within each cell. Well, it's actually eight if you include the decimal point, but uh, let's not split hairs, eh? Anyway, as you can see on the screen, and with the possible exception of the M or middle segment, and also the D for the decimal point, each of the remaining individual cell segments can be referred to as points on a compass, which seems logical to me, and it's easy enough to understand, and also to remember, certainly in terms of programming. I think the normal way of doing this though is to use letters of the alphabet such as alpha to hotel or a to h or even numeric such as 1 to 8 but I know which one I prefer. Secondly and what we need to consider next is actually writing a sketch code for our little display and to facilitate this I'm using a file called digit led display dot h library which was written specifically for the Mac 7219 module and I'm not sure if the following issues are unique to this particular library, but I wanted to draw your attention to a couple of things just in case. Basically, when it comes to either writing code for numeric characters on the display, or writing code for alpha or special characters on the display, there appears to be a slightly different method used for each. There is also a subtle difference in terms of how the LED module itself is actually addressed by the code. Now I have to confess that I struggled a bit with this when I first started writing sketch codes for LED displays as I found the differences between the two ways of doing things very confusing. So rather than you struggle as well I thought that I'd give you the benefit of hindsight and let you know what those differences are and how to get around them. 
before I do though I just wanted to reiterate that what I'm about to share with you only relates to the digit LED display dot H library that I'm using for this particular project and it's also based on my own experience and research if there are any total experts out there who can advise otherwise I'd be pleased to hear from you another note would be that there may well be other libraries out there for the max 7219 module and the code structure for those may well be different again anyway there are two distinct commands for sending characters to the display one is the ld.write command which handles alpha or special characters and the other is the ld.print digit command which handles all numeric values secondly each of these methods of coding results in the max 7219 module display being addressed in a slightly different way what I mean by this is that when writing code to send numeric characters to the display the code addresses it like this with the far right hand cell identified with an address of 0 and with the far left cell being addressed as 7 this is what's called a zero index address scale and there are many other electronic components that operate in a similar way to this such as multiplexers and LCD displays for example on the other hand when writing code to send alpha or special characters to the display the code addresses it differently like this with a non-zero index scale You'll also note that the number scale for both appears to be shown in reverse, which for the purposes of coding it is, and I'll show you how this works shortly when we get around to looking at the code itself. Now I'm very sorry that this technical bit about addressing LEDs is taking a while to cover, but it is important and it will help you with how to write code for these devices in future so we now come back to the subject of sending numerical characters to the display using the ld.print digit command and if you look at the code snippet on the screen in columns a and b you will see a number followed by a comma sign followed by another number on each line of code and taking the first line of code as an example what this means is actually quite straightforward with the first number being the numerical character that you want to send to the display zero in this case and the second number being the display cell address that you want to send it to which again in this case is obviously three the next three lines are similar in that we are sending zeros again but we're sending them to different display cell addresses that being two one and zero remembering that the cell addresses are zero indexed on this occasion now using the library that I have I've actually tried to put alpha characters in column A but when sending them to the display I end up getting a large erroneous number that makes no sense at all I've tried putting the alpha characters in single quotes in double quotes but nothing seems to work and it is on this point that I would ask any experts out there who may have knowledge of these things to let me know if you're able to send alpha characters when using the LD print digit code line. In the meantime, uh, what I've been doing is this, which is to use the other code command that I showed you previously, namely ld.write. For each line of code here, which is the reverse format of the LD print digit command, we have in column A the cell address, remembering this time that the display cell addresses are not zero indexed, and column B in which the alpha or special character details are placed. And already I can hear you saying, what on earth does B 00000001 mean? And if you look at the screen closely, you'll probably be able to work it out. Anyway, that brings us back to this and the segments in each display cell, which can be illuminated at will by putting in the right bit of code. Let me show you what I mean. On the screen now, you'll see in the last column a list of B codes, with each B followed by eight numerical characters, which will be either 0 or 1. 
Whenever you place a 1 in a B code, that will switch on the display cell segment that it's related to. And conversely, if you put a 0 in the B code, that will turn off the relevant segment. For example, on the first line here, when writing B1000000, the decimal point will illuminate. When writing B double zero double zero one treble zero as on the fifth line then the south segment will illuminate now you don't have to write a b code line for each segment that you want to display that would be far too laborious but what you can do instead is write a whole alpha or special character with just one b code simply by changing the zeros for ones as required and one way of remembering how to do it is refer to the decimal place as the first segment, north as the second, and then work around clockwise for the rest, finishing on the eighth segment in the middle. And here are some examples, and just to make sure I knew what I was talking about, which isn't very often, uh, I did actually double check these on my LED display first. So if we take this character here first, character C, and we'll just run through this line of code. Uh, the B for Bravo is always there uh, on all on these, but the next one over is uh, position one, which is normally for the decimal point. And as we don't want the decimal point here, that is a zero. The next one is north up here. So we want that, so that's a one. The next two are uh, northeast and southeast, and we don't want that either. So those two are zero. The next three we need, which is south, uh, southwest, and northwest. And then lastly, uh, digit eight, which is normally the middle one here. We don't want that either. So that code equals C over here, the number three, B again as usual. Uh, we don't want the decimal place. Uh, the next one is north, and the one after that is uh, northeast. The one after that is southeast and south, and that's those around there. Then we have two blanks, two zeros for the south west and northwest, and then the last one is this one here in the middle. And at the risk of boring you to death, we come down to this one, that's a H um, B as usual, zero zero, which means we don't want the decimal point and we don't want the north bar north segment up here. We do want the next two, which is uh, northeast and southeast. We don't want the south, so that's a zero, but we do want the rest. So that's uh, southwest, northwest, and the middle bar. And then we come to this one, which is all ones. So I don't need to explain that. You'll know exactly what that means. Okay, so I think we've done this completely to death. Uh, hopefully it was some use to you. Um, it certainly will help you with your coding. Um, so I think that's the best place to go next. Have a look at that before we forget everything that we just looked at for the last half an hour. See you then. Okay, so here we are in the Arduino IDE desktop application. And this is the first of the two codes required. And this one is for the Mega 2560 microcontroller, which handles the data ref values uh, coming out of X-Plane, processes the information and sends it to the LED display module. Um, this code or this sketch uh, will work for the Leonardo and the Mega 2560 obviously and also I believe it will work for the Arduino Uno. It will only work unfortunately with X-Plane 11 and 12 however and not Microsoft 2020 or any other flight simulator and the reason for that is because we're using the X-Plane plugin. So start of the initial setup section we need uh, three libraries uh, the Arduino.h library which is included uh, with this package we need the X-Plane Direct.h library which you can get from um, the Curiosity Workshop website uh, as I've covered in previous videos and then we also need the digit LED display dot H library which you can get from this uh, web address here at, a, at the github repository then we define uh, three uh, pin terminals on the mega 2560 for the serial communication 
uh, wires from the Max 7219 display module. We initiate that display and we also initiate the X Plane Direct plugin. Then we create a couple of long integers in the microcontroller's memory to monitor two values, uh, and that's the data ref values for the transponder code. Uh, one value will be um, on the current loop cycle of this code, and the other will be on the previous loop cycle of this code. And uh, the sketch code is monitoring those two values and if it sees a change between one and the other it will know something's happened in the cockpit. So we get down to the void setup section and remember anything in here only happens once when you load the sketch code onto your uh, microcontroller. Um, first thing it's going to do is to clear any values on the uh, display screen and the LED display screen that is and then it will set the brightness value of the display um, you can do that between a minimum of 1 and a maximum of 15 I've just chosen 5 then we declare how many cell addresses there are on the display itself and in our case it's 8 now we come down to the section that I've labored on quite heavily in the, in the previous part of this video and we're dealing with LD right um, first of all and we are sending something to cell address number 8 in this case and don't forget that you, when using this code line the uh, address range for the display LED display module is not zero indexed uh, it goes from 1 on the right to 8 on the left so on the far left hand uh, digit of the display we are going to send a uh, special character as denoted by this B code and we're going to do the same for cell address 7, 6 and 5 and this particular special character is just uh, a dash, simple dash uh, and that uh, we can get by just eliminating the middle segment of each of those displays. Then we come down to the LD print digit code line and in this case we are sending the alpha, oh sorry, the uh, numeric value of 0 to these um, cell addresses 3 to 1 and 0 remembering in this case that the um, cell address ranges are 0 index so they start from 0 on the right and go to 7 on the left now this part here because it's in the void setup section will only happen once so we're basically setting up the display to look like dash 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 0 0 0 zero is that four zeros yeah four zeros so um, that's what your display will initially show if you use this code it will change later when we're running with x-plane uh, but all that will happen in the void loop section of this code this uh, section of code here not to worry about it too much it's just to make sure that the plugin is working as it should Then we come down to this section here which is uh, registering our interest in this data ref here which is obviously the transponder code data ref in X-Plane and we're registering our interest because at some point later on through this code we want to get the uh, data ref value out of X-Plane so that it can be presented on our LED display module. Right, so we get to the voice, uh, void loop section here. Um, this is just another initiation of the um, uh, X-Plane Direct plugin. And then, then we get down to what may be arguably the most important part of this code. Um, it, and it's basically, we're starting with this line here and we're going to ask, is the data ref value for the squawk code different on this current loop cycle of the code than it was for the previous loop cycle of the code and if it was um, it's going to assume that the score code or the data ref value for the score code has changed uh, at some point and if it senses that change it's going to print the score code or uh, the data ref value of the score code uh, on the display and it's going to put the right hand most uh, digit of that code or that value 
in cell address 0 on the display. Now if the value, if the data f value that comes out of xplane is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, then the character 4 will go in cell address 0. The character 3 will go in cell address 1. The character 2 will go in uh, cell address 2. And the character 1 will go in cell address 3. So you end up with four numbers. And this all happens automatically. However, if the data rev value they get from xplane uh, is less than four characters, uh, like uh, two, three, four, or three, four, or even just four, then by virtue of these three, three uh, lines here, we can add some leading zeros to the code so that it presents properly on the LED display. So if the value that comes out of xplane is just two, three, four, uh, then it's less than uh, 1000, in which case the code will put a leading zero in cell address number three. If the data ref value that comes out of xplane is just three, four, then it's less than 100. So the code will put another leading zero, uh, this time in cell address two. And if the data ref value that comes out of xplane is just four, it's therefore less than 10, then it will put a third leading zero and this one will go in cell address number one. And then at the end of this section, uh, the data ref value on the current cycle is equalized to the value of the previous cycle just to stop any unwanted data being sent to the LED display itself. Then lastly, we come down to this uh, final bit of code, uh, which I wouldn't worry about uh, too much. Uh, it's just the uh, explain plugin code required uh, to get it ready for the next loop cycle of the overall code. And now we come down to the second uh, sketch code. This one is for the Leonardo microcontroller, uh, which will be acting as a HID device and it will take inputs from the eight push buttons process that information and then operate the virtual push buttons uh, for the transponder in the cockpit. Now because we're using this Leonardo as a HID device, um, the sketch code will only work for that uh, or any other um, microcontroller with the AT18 Mega32U4 processor. So unfortunately that excludes the Mega2560 and the UNO. Um, in this particular case. This particular sketch code uh, will work or should work with any, any flight simulator X-Plane, MS, FS2020 and um, even DCS subject to assignable commands being available in those simulators. So if we get down to the initial setup section and we only need one library here and that's the joystick.h library uh, which you should find within the uh, Arduino IDE software package by default. Then we're going to assign uh, some uh, terminal pin numbers on the Leonardo for our eight push buttons. So we're assigning terminals, uh, pin terminal 0 through 7. We are setting up uh, some integers to record the uh, voltage state of those push buttons at any given time. Um, these particular integers are keeping a record of the voltage state on the previous um, loop cycle. The ones for the current loop cycle are further down in the loop section of the code unusually. Then we set up our joystick function. Um, we are only using a part of this uh, and that is the number eight there, and that's eight because we are setting up a maximum of eight uh, push buttons that we require. You can have up to 32 there. This zero is for the number of hat switches that you're using, uh, which you can have a maximum of two, I believe, but we're not using those, so that stays as zero. And all of these false declarations are for um, axes for joysticks, potentiometers and so on. And as we're not using those uh, in this case, then all of those remain false. Then we can come down to the void setup section and when declaring our uh, pin terminals uh, for our push buttons 
as inputs and we're taking advantage of the onboard pull-up resistor built into the Leonardo. Um, we also initiate the joystick library down here. Then we come down to the void loop section. Um, a lot of information here as always. Um, if we just concentrate on this bit here highlighted in green um, we are creating an integer for the uh, voltage state of push button zero on the current loop cycle. This bit is usually done uh, further up in the code but for these for this particular example it's been done here um, and then we digitally read pin terminal zero for push button zero and if the code det uh, detects that the voltage state for push button zero on this loop this current loop is different from the previous loop um, then it uh, issues a press command of the virtual button zero in Windows and therefore in X-Plane and it's that that can be assigned as required to one of the uh, transponder buttons in the virtual cockpit. Then we just equalize uh, the process by um, saying that the, vo uh, the voltage state of in of the push button zero in this loop cycle is the same as it was in the previous loop cycle and that just prevents uh, repeat requests going into windows for a button press and we do exactly the same again for all the remaining bu uh, push buttons um, being careful to alter these uh, descriptors here the ones in white text as required so in this one for example we're now talking about push button one instead of push button zero and also you need to change the virtual uh, windows button to number one in this case instead of zero and then two and three and four and so on and that is uh, the code for the second microcontroller Okay, so now we've written all of that code, especially for the Leonardo that we're setting up as a human interface device. We need to just go into Windows uh, and the control panel. Devices and printers should see our Leonardo here, which we have. So we right click that, game controller settings, properties, and there are our eight buttons. And as I press the physical buttons on the front fascia panel each of the red buttons in Windows should illuminate one at a time uh, so let's do that now so we'll start with button on the far left hand side yes two three four five six seven eight and uh, you'll notice that um, the buttons numbered there are 1 through 8 in the Windows control panel. But uh, when we coded them, if you can cast your mind back to that, the numbers were referred to as uh, the button numbers were referred to as 0 through to 7. So just be aware of that um, slight difference in numbering there. Okay, so I've uh, taken photographs of my uh, slightly amended test board from all angles as usual so you can see uh, how things are laid out. Um, this is almost identical to the um, uh, Annunciator warning light uh, or LED array that I did a video on a few weeks ago. Um, except of course there's no little LED lights, there is a max uh, 7219 LED display instead and also push buttons instead of toggle switches um, but in terms of the wiring uh, we have the Arduino Leonardo first here uh, which is controlling all of the inputs from these eight push buttons over on this side and um, these are the uh, signal cables that go across to pin terminals uh, 0 through 7 on here and then on the other side of each push button we've got a ground return through this uh, ground return distribution board back to the Leonardo uh, to complete the circuit. On this side we have the Mega 2560 which is handling the outputs from X-Plane and in this case we're looking at the data ref value outputs for the transponder in the virtual aircraft. So uh, that information uh, comes through from the uh, PC through to the board here 
processes that information and then sends it through these uh, serial communication cables here to the LED display over here and the LED display has also got a 5 volt supply and a ground return circuit uh, which comes down to here um, and I think that's as far as it gets um, there's nothing more spectacular than that so uh, we shall move on okay then finally uh, before we start looking at the max 7219 display in action so to speak there is one other thing we need to do and that's to come up here to settings and then to joystick and here are the eight push buttons uh, that we've set up on our test board and we've also now seen in action in the windows control panel so it's exactly the same eight buttons again so we just simply need to assign each of these buttons as required so i'm going to press the buttons on my test board here you can see them light up two three oh miss one three four five six seven and eight and uh, when you first look in here to assign your uh, push buttons it will say something like do nothing so you have to uh, assign them to the relevant uh, push button on the transponder and to do that you just go over to here type transponder um, and there they all are so transponder digit 0 through 7 so I've already done that so I don't need to go and do it again and there they all are all ready to be used so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up my camcorder and take some video of my test board and I'll overlay that on the virtual cockpit of this little Cessna so you'll be able to see me pressing the buttons on the test board and you will be able to also see uh, the uh, squawk code changing in the virtual cockpit and also changing on the physical Max 7219 uh, display that I've got also on my test board. Okay, so I've reloaded X-Plane 12. I've uh, launched the Cessna Skyhawk aircraft and uh, the score code uh, is set by default when opening the aircraft as 7000. Um, and courtesy of the data ref tool that I wanted to show you again, you will see that exact number there for that data ref and that data ref 7000. And if I start pressing uh, buttons on my physical uh, test board and you should see the squawk code changing in the virtual transponder in the data ref tool and also uh, courtesy of the video overlay on the max 7219 so I'm just going to press a few buttons here hopefully my hand doesn't get in the way of the camera for the video inlay but let's try it one actually I'll come back to one two three four there we are so you can see here I can get my mouse sorted out you can see here one two three four one two three four so keep an eye on that bit as well there's the one two three four on the transponder in the virtual cockpit and the overlay will show exactly the same thing if I press six 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 then again in the data ref tool that's what you'll get in the cockpit in the transponder you'll get that and hopefully that's what you're seeing also on the video overlay try something different get my finger out of the way three 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 everything changes in the data ref tool the virtual transponder and of course the max 7219 now the test is when we start putting leader leading zeros in in front of the score code so I'm just going to press zero that's the first one and seven 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 or three sevens now you can see on the transponder exactly the code that we want zero treble seven on the overlay you can see the same code on my test board on the max 7219 but look what's happening in the data ref tool no zero completely ignored all you get is the three sevens similarly if I press this zero twice and then six six on the virtual transponder you get the full code on the max 7219 you get the full code 
but up here on data ref tool which is what xplane is actually storing for this data ref you just get six six one more try zero 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 one and we get the full zero 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 one here on the overlay you've got the same but up here you've just got one one final test zero 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 so we've got zeros on the virtual transponder we've got zeros on the max 7219 and we've just got one zero shown as a stored value in the data ref tool anyway it works that's the main thing um, and if it hadn't been for those few extra lines of code that i put in uh, the values that you would be seeing on my on the max 7219 on the test board would be complete gobbledygook so i'm pleased to say that that works so we'll set that back uh, for a VFR flight 1200 yep we got 1200 there 1200 there and on the max 7219 okay so that really brings us to the end of this video um, I'm very pleased with how things went it took me a while to get this project resolved um, but that was only because of the the way that X-Plane stored the data ref values for the transponder code anyway I persevered and we got there in the end um, just to let you know that in my Google Drive um, I have put some photographs of my test board the theoretical wiring diagram and also some photographs uh, selected from the video showing you how to address the seven segment um, display cells on the max 7219 so if you want to get access to those just click the link in the, descript in the uh, description and I'll authorize the release of them for you in the meantime if you have any questions then please by all means let me know and I'll endeavor to assist you where I can so lastly, uh, big thanks for watching and uh, ta-ta for now.